Hey everyone, it's Daniel Brother Barbaris. So now we're going to set up our group policy for our domain. Okay, so let's go to our DC and we're going to click start and open up group policy management. I'm going to maximize that. I'm going to expand our forest, expand domains, CM lab, and then I'm going to click on default domain policy. I'm going to click this button, click OK. Then I'm going to expand domain controllers policy. And you remember that allow cryptography algorithms compatible with NT4. We're going to make sure that that's disabled. So click edit that one. So you're going to right click the default domain controller policy. Click edit. Go to policies. We're going to go to administrative templates down to system. And then we're going to go to net logon. And we can click settings so that it shows them all in alphabetical order. And you can see allow cryptography. There it is. We're going to click disabled. And we're going to click OK. And then we're going to close that window. Now we're right here. We're going to right click our default domain policy. We're going to, and if you, you can see default domain policy edit we're going to maximize that so we're going to go to policies we're going to go administrative templates windows components down here at the bottom we're going to go to bitlocker drive encryption and we're going to click on setting so that we can see everything in alphabetical order and what we're going to do is we're going to choose the cipher strength for Windows 10 version 15, 11, and later. And you can see that is the top one, okay? So double click on that, click Enabled, and in the drop downs, we're gonna choose the highest encryption, XTS AES 256 bit, just like that. Click OK. Then we're gonna store our Active Directory BitLocker recovery keys in Active Directory. So click Enabled and click OK. Now we're going to go to our fixed data drives. So what we're going to do, you can see fixed data drives here, or you can expand it from this area and click it there. And what you can do is choose how BitLocker fixed drives can be recovered. So it's right here. We're going to click Enabled. Omit recovery options from BitLocker Setup Wizard. That way the user doesn't see it or anybody else doesn't see it because it doesn't need to be seen because it's stored in Active Directory. And do not enable BitLocker until recovery information is stored to AD. Okay, click OK. That's for fixed data drives. Operating system drives, we're gonna do the same thing. Choose how BitLocker protected operating system drives can be recovered. Click Enabled, Omit, and do not enable. Click OK. Then removable data drives. We're going to do the same thing. Choose how BitLocker enabled drives. And it's just more of the same. Click OK. So now we're here. We've done this one. And now we're going to do the uh, intranet zones. Remember how we did that with a trusted um, folder. So we're going to go to Internet Explorer. We're going to go to Internet Control Panel, Security Page. And we're going to click on setting so that everything's in alphabetical order again. <laughs> click it twice. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is this one here. Click enabled. Include all local intranet sites not listed in other zones. Include all network paths or UNCs. Click OK. Include all sites that bypass the proxy server. Click enabled. And then down at the bottom, turn on automatic detection of intranet enabled. And OK. Now this one is, uh, is if you'd like to do it, we'll re-enable this after we're done. But this will speed up things because what we're going to do is turn off Microsoft Defender Antivirus from running in the background, which scans each file. And this can speed up things a whole bunch. OK, so let's go here to Microsoft Defender Antivirus. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But uh, 
I do this when I'm setting up a lab, and then I'll re-enable it once I'm done. Okay, so Microsoft Defender Antivirus, turn off Microsoft Defender Antivirus, click Enabled, okay. Allow antivirus service to remain running always, click Disabled, okay. And then Real-Time Protection, turn off Real-Time Protection, click Enabled, and okay. All right, and now here's our policies. We're gonna add our, our configuration manager servers and our domain admins to the local admins group of each machine. Okay, so we're gonna go here to Windows settings, security settings, restricted groups. I'm gonna right click restricted groups, click add group, browse. I'm gonna type administrators. Check names, click OK, OK, and now we're going to click Add, Browse, and I'm going to put CM Servers and the semicolon Domain Admins. Check names, click OK, OK, and OK. Now we're going to minimize these windows because what we're going to do now is create our firewall policy. Now it's very tedious sometimes to do a firewall policy and I've set it up for you pretty easily. We're going to use PowerShell to do this and I've got all the ports that we need from NTP to SQL Server to our debugger, HTTP, HTTPS, WSUS, everything's all in this command and it'll create these using a GPO session and once it's done, it'll save that. And you'll see what I'll show you here is if we go to Windows Defender Firewall, you'll notice there's no inboard, inbound or outbound rules right now. So you'll see the rules once I'm done here. And I'll show you that. So I'm going to minimize these. I'm going to go all the way down to 190. I'm not going to go to 191 because I want to be, I want to see if there's any red here. I'm going to go all the way up to 112 and copy. So right click the desktop, open here as administrator, yes, and paste. And now we're just making sure there's no red. Okay, looked good. I'm going to press exit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on outbound rules and then inbound rules. And now you can see they're all there. Okay. You can see Kerberos and SQL server, SMB, everything we need, TFTP. Okay. So those are all set. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of the ones that we want manually to be in there. Okay. So we're going to click on we're going to right click our inbound rules, new rule. This is for pinging, so custom, all programs. We're going to go to ICMP version 4 for protocol type, next. Any IP addresses, allow the connection, next. We're going to call this ICMP v4, finish, and there it is. We'll do the same thing here with outbound ICMP. So new rule, custom, next, all programs, ICMP version four, next, any IP address, allow the connection, make sure it's not on block, next, next, same thing, ICMP v4, finish, and we're good. Now we're going to go back to our inbound rules. We're going to click new rule and we're going to click on predefined. And this is for our file and printer sharing. Next, you can see our file and printer sharing there. Allow the connection finish. And you can see all our file printing sharing is good. Now we're going to do WMI or Windows Management Instrumentation, new rule. Same thing, predefined. Go all the way to the bottom. Windows Management Instrumentation, there it is. Next, see the three rules there. Next, Allow, Finish, and you can see them up there at the top. The last one we're going to do here is Remote Desktop, new rule. Predefined, go down here, Remote Desktop, 
next, there's the three, next finish, and there's our three remote desktop. We can close Group Policy Manager completely, and on all our VMs, we're going to open up PowerShell as administrator. Okay, we're going to copy from 268 to 267 so that we have that enter, that carriage return. There we go. I always wait for the DC to do its update before I update the other ones. It's just a thing I do, pet peeve. So I wait for their policies to complete, and then I do the other two just fine, just like that. Okay, so we're going to stay on CM01 for right now because we're going to verify that the policies took place because we're going to verify the groups and the administrators, CM service, and domain admins are in our local administrators group. So we're going to click that. We're going to go on groups, administrators, and there they are. Administrator, CM servers, domain admins. So we're good. And now on all VMs, we're going to restart computer force. I'm going to copy that. I'll press enter here. There. And there. Once those are all restarted, I'll uh, start the next video. Let's get to our login screens. So now our firewall is set up and we're ready to go. <laughs> yep, just waiting. It's fine. I'll give it a few moments and I'll come right back. Okay, all the machines have restarted. We're good to go, and I'll see you in the next video.